Welcome to Toffee TV, it is the match reaction, Everton 1, Southampton 1, Everton beaten 6-5 on penalties by the Saints, I don't know what to say really, uh, it was absolutely terrible at Goodison Park tonight, awful performance, dominated by a scratch Southampton side, we had 24% possession or 26% possession, absolutely shocking. And I don't know where we go from here. You know, they've just literally put their reserve team out. They haven't won a game either. They put a reserve side out and we couldn't get near them. One funny stat, and I do have to laugh at it, the stats. Everton had 208 passes tonight. And Harbour Bella, Southampton centre-back, had 150 on his own, which I just find absolutely hilarious. Um, the team was interesting. The manager had Java Jr. in goal. Uh, he had Roman Dixon at right back. He went with Michael Keane and Jake O'Brien as the centre backs. And he had Dwight McNeil at left back. Uh, in midfield, he had Harris Armstrong, a debut, full debut for him, alongside Aurel Mangala and Abdelai Decore, who was captain, strangely. Uh, and then in on wide areas, uh, Illiman and Jai on one side, Jesper Lindsay on the other, and Beto through the middle. And it never worked at any time. Did it look like working? Everton had a couple of moments on the break, really. I mean, Jesper Linson had a great chance at 1 0 running through and a dreadful finish. Uh, we'd already had a couple of shots. They, they knocked the ball around and looked in complete control, but. He didn't really have a focal point, which which would have given them sort of that killer in you know that that killer ball at the top end of the pitch. Someone to really put us under pressure. They had Brayton Diaz and Cameron Artin on the bench, who started you know who started against United at the weekend. For them. he brought Adam Armstrong in, who just isn't a Premier League centre forward. Good in the Championship, not really able to do it at this level. Although he did beat Michael Keane twice in the air. And he's about half the size of Michael Keane. Um, that was an interesting moment. But Southampton knocked the ball around really well. I was really impressed with uh, Hugo Chukwu in the middle. I thought he was very good in the middle of the park. And they just, you know, Lalana just kept things ticking over for them. And listen, I'm not saying Everton should play the way Southampton play. Because at times it's overkill. I think they can be a little bit more move the ball a bit quicker, but we just couldn't get near them. And the thing that impressed me, Russell Martin has coached that squad really well because you could tell it was a Southampton side by looking at it, even though a lot of the personnel were changed. They passed it around and we just couldn't get near them. Now, okay, we had a few changes ourselves, but what are we trying to do? You know, there's a lot of... There's a lot of excuses, I think, being being given... For some reason, and I don't understand the reason why the excuses are there, but I just looked at Southampton and you could tell it was them and you knew what they sort of did. They got into the final third, played the wrong ball, really, at times. There was one in the first half where they just hesitated, couldn't get a shot away. Jake O'Brien eventually cleared it up. You know, they had um, Corney, Maxwell Corney, who, who nearly ended up putting Dwight McNeil's shoulder out simply just by going past him, doing a little trick, and McNeil just fell over near to his shoulder. But Everton did take the lead. Roman Dixon charging forward brilliantly, using the pe <coughs> excuse me, using the pace, something that this side just doesn't have anything of. So he's a, you know, he's really a little bit of an X factor for us when he plays in that role by using his pace. Linston gave it back, he went charging on a run, got a corner. Dwight McNeil swung the corner into the back post. It was kept alive by Jake O'Brien. Michael Keane headed the goal with an the line to headed it in, flashed the header in to give us the lead. It was against the run of play. But 
like I said, Southampton hadn't really tested Jao Virginia, but they we just couldn't get the ball off them. And just like I say, I just I, I'm confused watching us as what we're doing. Beto knocking long balls up to Beto, who was scrapping and, and battling with their centre backs. The, the referee, I thought he he should have given Evan a few more free kicks, really. In for the way Beto was handled, but we just don't get we weren't getting people round them enough. But we did have, as I alluded to before, we did have a great chance to make it two 0 The ball play through the middle uh, into Jesper Lindstrom, who raced clear and he should have buried it. He's hit it straight. The ball is straight under his body, so we couldn't get any angle to beat McCarthy. When really he had, if he'd have looked around, he had a lot of time. He could have got it out of his feet. And used the angle to steer it into the far corner. He didn't. He rushed it, and the chance had gone. And you know that was a real moment for two 0 And then Southampton got themselves a goal. It was a a little bit of naivety by Roman Dixon. We were caught out in the ball over the top. He used his pace brilliantly. He got out nice and quick to Ryan Fraser, but he didn't have to put a tackle in. He he put a tackle in, mistimed it, got booked for his troubles. Then he got a free kick. The ball coming at the line of Corre. Had one man to mark in the box and didn't mark him. And Taylor Bellis headed it into the floor and up into the net. And it was 1-1 and, and they deserved it. There's no way I'm going to sit here. And it wasn't against the run-up play. They dominated the ball. At that stage, I think we had 22% possession um, when he headed it in. And they had a couple of moments where they got in round the back. And Joe Aribo headed one over and he should have done well better with. Maxwell Corney cut in on the left foot and should have done much better. Fired over the bar. We just couldn't really get a grip of the game. Half time came. They made the change. They took Lalana off and put Fernandez on. And he, he looked like he could have been playing for Everton because his favourite pass was passing it back. Uh, he should have been in our team. We just didn't really up our game. And then the manager took off Beto after the hour and brought on Ashley Young, which you can, if you weren't there, you can imagine how that went down. If you were there, you heard how that. That substitution went down. Um, Harrison Armstrong just couldn't get into it. Listen, he's a young lad. I think he's 17, isn't he? 17, 18. He, he is going to be a good player, you can tell. He, he just It just didn't really work for him tonight. Um, but I'm sure he'll get more opportunities. But it'll have done him the world of good to get that hour under his belt in the first team. A good listen in front of over 30,000. So I think that's one for him to put in his, in his bank and keep working. Um, I just think so. He, he, the game just sort of passed them by a little bit tonight. But that's that's football, young players. That's that's what it's about. Uh, we brought on Tim Irabunum as well, trying to get a bit of a little bit of control, sort of having a little kick forward. But we just and Jai went up front. Young come on and went to left back. McNeil went in the ten. Jack Harrison came on as well. Um, yeah, it, it, we were never, we just didn't ever look like we were going to take the game by the scruff of the neck. Our only hope was from set pieces. You know, we had a couple of moments with a corner at a Boonham late on, Ed had one over. Southampton had, had brought Brayton Diaz on, and he, a couple of times, he caused us issues. One where he'd done really well, he skipped inside, and he needed to fire the shot into the corner. He hit it straight down the throat of Virginia. Um, they had another lad on. I can't remember his name. Tyler. I want to say Tyler. It sounds like Tyler Dibble, is it, or something like that? But he, he was quite... He, he had the old socks around his ankles. He went on a good little run and cut in and fired one over after a good run. And I actually thought Southampton should have had the penalty in about the 88 minutes. Ashley Young, stupid challenge. The referee gave a corner. I thought it was a penalty. I thought the lad got to the ball first, knocked it in Young went through him and then went through the ball. But the referee didn't give it. He gave a corner. Um, that come to, to nothing. And then Roman Dixon in the last, basically the last action of the game, went on a fly and run forward um, and won us a corner, which came to no avail. That was our chance. I have missed out another moment and it was quite an important moment, to be fair. Yes, but Lindstrom, Beto done really well and slid him in and he was in one-on-one. -on -one. That, that one. He was in. Linson was in clean through. And just hesitated. It took so long that he eventually, the keeper, I think, made a save. 
comfortable save and he, he waited and waited instead of just getting it out of his feet and going across the keeper. And he missed two big moments tonight, but I couldn't sit here and, and convince anybody that Everton deserved to win. We absolutely didn't deserve to win the game. They dominated the game with a scratch side. Uh, we had made changes, absolutely we had, but they look like well-coached team. We look puzzled with what we're doing at the moment. I don't know what the plan is. Putting the Jai up front and continuing to bang long balls to a, a lad who is not going to win headers is not a good a good tactic. It's just not. We should have been playing through and we weren't. And Virginia's knocking, smashing balls up and they're just dominating it. I don't know what we're doing, but we need to get our act together because we've gone out of the cup to another defeat. I don't know what else to say. Man of the match. I'm going to give it to Roman Dixon. I fall for the goal simply by making a rash challenge. But I thought overall he did well and he led his enthusiasm. The pace is a real worry for the opposition. I think sometimes his passing is sloppy. I wouldn't try to cover that up. He's got to get better in possession of the ball. But I think overall he did well at Goodison tonight. Um, you know, when Jai in patches was bright. O'Brien was okay. Um, I don't really think anybody else sort of put the head above the parapet. Lindstrom had moments, but missed two big, big opportunities. So, Roman Dixon, I'm going for. He's my man at the match. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. Another, another disappointing night at Goodison Park. Thanks for watching. See you later.